The Speed Chess Championship Final was brought to you by On Juno. Sign up for a free checking account at onjuno.com to receive 5% cash back and a 2.15% bonus on deposits. It's your interest. Take it. Holy bleep. If that's not needing to find your form, I don't know what is, right? We know his class. We know who he is. He's the world champion, but that that better be a wake-up call because you just lost a completely winning game with a one-move queen blunder. Never seen anything like that. Oh, my gosh. It just made no sense. I, I, I'm in disbelief right now. Oh, my gosh. Let's bring up the analysis board again. Just show. I mean, I think we were right. We don't. We saw the eval bar, but we don't have. We didn't have anything else with it. We just assumed it was f6. I want to be sure we were right. I think again. Yeah, I think the winning move was f6. Indeed, we were right. So that was what was missed. He misses that and plays queen check. But then just absolutely, queen c6 was a great find by Maxime. You got to give him credit there. The only move that actually stops the mate, the x-ray defense. But then this move, queen g6, is absolutely absolutely because it's fruity it's fruity with nuts and no one likes fruit with nuts it's gross Danny, get the nuts out of the fruit Danny, i i know what must have happened and i see the chat saying as much that he meant to go pawn to g6 but he probably had already grabbed his queen and then like put try to put the pawn to g6 and so his queen went to g6 out of the pawn the mouse slip possible but the drag click where you click the square and then the piece is not a thing. It's not, it's not, it's not a smart move on chess.com. There's grabbing the piece and then moving to the square. And there's clicking on the square and then clicking on it's possible. Obviously possible, but it just still just seems really uncharacteristic of Carlson. Well maybe maybe he just wanted to give a nod to the Botez sisters and all their great work on Twitch, because <laughs> that was a Botez gambit if I've ever seen one. Hey. And like most Botez Gambits, you remember it for the reaction, not for the quality chess. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> that's what just happened right there. Oh my gosh. Uh, I I cannot believe what we just saw. And I'm going to try to get back to the game at hand, but my mind will still be on that yeah. Queen Blunder for a while to come. But in this position, once again, Maxime has sacrificed a pawn in the early stages of the game. And he's hoping that the Bishop pair is enough compensation but when i see this position i see white trying to go f5 the d5 yeah, like square it. looks nice somehow it feels like white should be better but maxime has a really good grasp of these positions at least he has shown that throughout this match yeah agreed um because i'm with you the optics i love white's position it feels like black's pawns are ugly white has space but maxime has been playing this type of weird king's indian Sicilian gone wrong here for several games but I, I will say, it doesn't mean he's had better positions, Robert. He's just, he's been better in the critical moments. I mean, you know, that that's what's happened, right? Magnus hasn't been himself in the critical moments. I don't know that it's because Maxime has had great positions in the middle game. It's true. And, I mean, this position is, look at this, a pawn on d6 already. That pawn go to d7, you put a bishop on b5. And even though black is up a pawn, only white can be better here, right? Yeah. It's an obstacle bishop position, so you're kind of happy if you're MBL, right? Because at this point, you're playing a little bit with house money after you just stole that game. Um, up, to, up two games when it could easily be tied. Today's Speed Chess Championship video is brought to you by On Juno. With On Juno, you can create a free checking account in under five minutes, and that's pretty fast. They don't have physical branches, so you don't need to pay their executives millions of dollars in overhead each year. Plus, those savings are passed on to you, the consumer, in the form of 5% cash back on brands you love and use every day, including Amazon, Netflix, Uber, DoorDash, and more. Anjuno offers an industry-leading bonus rate of 2.15% on deposits, helping you grow your money, while Anjuno helps the game of chess grow. Backed by top companies like Sequoia and Polychain, Anjuno's clean interface and easy-to-use features let you take full advantage of the most powerful checking account on the planet. Click the link in the description below to sign up for an account today and receive 10% cash back on Chess.com memberships. On Juno, it's your interest. Take it. I'm yeah, still in disbelief, honestly. And I'm trying to figure this one out here. Rook F1 coming, but the king on G7 protects the bishop there. 
I like E3 mostly as a decoy, but also to allow you to play E4 next and plug that bishop on the D4 square for black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a fantastic idea. You might even lose one of the pawns. It almost doesn't matter. This D4 square is such a strong outpost. It also cuts off communication from White's rooks to the past D pawn. What a great idea, Robert. And Magnus is thinking about it as well because he thinks it's a good idea too. It's a little frustrating. Here comes E4. That's one of those one of those moves that I didn't see myself, but once he played it, I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Let's improve that bishop on F6, which is staring into its own pawn. Indeed, indeed. And indeed, do we have uh, we have a match today. 26,000 plus of you on Twitch, 20,000 on YouTube. Don't go anywhere. We're, we are going to have a photo finish. D2, King C2. Now, still Carlson's two result position to play for, right? He's going to win E4, I think. Although, I don't know if we can say two results anymore after that last game. All yeah, three the results, at it. always possible. A queen G6 is Votez oh. Gambit, always possible. Not here, though. Yep. No, no queens to blunder. Wild. Okay, look at... You know what that move Speaking says, Robert? This back seems playing for a win with that move at five. He certainly is. That, because I mean, he realizes that the pawn can't get too far, and why not move the pawns of his own? Yeah, I mean, that was a... And look at G3 this week. I mean, if you wanted to simplify everyone, let's bring up the analysis board. Maxime could have played other moves. I mean, including just bishop d4 to cut off and come into b2. But f5 is risky because it allows white this move that's going to keep protection of the d-pawn. But Maxime says, no, it's okay. I'm, I don't, I'm not, I don't fear the d-pawn. I think, I think black is doing okay here. Oh, maybe he'll regret it. Well, b4 just went to undermine then up here comes the second pawn and now they're here comes c6 the oh my gosh I mean, who's better this turned around really quickly white has to be better you have pawn of the seventh rank yeah and f4 is not and possible what? because c7 yeah i mean matt you see magnus kind of lean in there and maxime give a little bit of a right that was very subtle but it was a hidden behind that manly goatee but maxime was uh, not not happy with that Oh, stealing a pawn there. So what's the count? Even material, but we can tell whose pawns are better here. Those pawns on C6 and D7. But I like Rook F8 a lot. It's a great move. You can't just sit passively. Otherwise, White's going to start scooping up all the material. Rook yep. F8 allows that Rook to infiltrate later, and the C6 pawn now is a problem. King to D6 played. Yeah, that, that might have been the trick for Maxime to force the draw. Honestly, that was that was very well timed. You said it. Rook f8, well timed. King d6. He did not take a passive defensive approach. MVL got aggressive. But the clock situation is not good for Maxime. And Rook b5 check is a scary move to me. Oh because wow! The king might have to go to a6. Look at that move. He so did that specifically to free the c7 square. So they're separated pawn which should be good for winning chances all things considered but i think that rook f6 move was really nice by maxime yeah it might be enough to draw actually h6 and h7 wait a second wait a second what h no it's the wrong bishop it's the wrong bishop just put your king on h8 that's all you need ah, to do. and you can Easy sack draw. okay don't play king yep. of eight because that would allow the blunder but yes you can sack your the point is you can always sack for the D-pawn, as long as the king reaches this corner, it's a draw. But you're not able to do that, actually. You can never sack because your king can't get over there. Your king is stuck where it is. It's winning. What in the world? Just king king D5, king C6, this is winning. And eventually you get your king to C8. Oh, it's, wow. He's in Zugzwang. That is... And he won on time. Wait, MBL, I think, knew he was lost, anyway. so he let him flag. Yeah. Right? What? Uh, was, Robert, teach me, teach. Yeah, that was so instructive. What is going on here? <laughs> so which uh, uh, position do you want to start at? So the final position is winning because there's no way to stop. Just king e6, king f7, king g8, and I'm going to get a queen. So so that clarifies the final position. But when did you first realize it was winning for white? Back here when he won the e3 pawn, king takes e3? 
Well, I realized once I couldn't get my king to g7. If that king could just teleport to g7, like around move right. 47, then it's immediately a draw because all I have to do is sack my bishop for the d pawn. But right. I can't move my king away from the promoting square because white's idea is to promote one pawn as a sacrifice and then promote the other. So right. it just, uh, I started realizing you can't, if you can't do that, then there must be an issue. And yeah, when he won the e pawn, it was clear that it was winning. No, great point. I've been highlighting those ideas showing that a king of seven, king of eight is one square away from drawing, but white just sacks one pawn to queen the other. So you're exactly right. And there was no way to stop the progress. Eventually, once once e3 was pushed, the bishop can't defend the pawn on e3 and the square, which is why Magnus wins it and ultimately wins what I, I think we can say was a desperately needed game there for the world champion. I mean, we're talking about if you're just tuning in, first of all, where have you been? Magnus has been calling. Uh, he just, he blundered his queen in one move, takes a tied match to down by two, but that was a comeback right there.